again. In my last video, I talked about how I moved my baby chicks outside to the main chicken run when they were only four weeks old. And of course, at that stage, they needed an additional heat source and I provided it using a light bulb and a bucket. Pete asked for some further details, so here they are. Adult hens are pretty good at using their own metabolism to regulate their own body temperature, at least as far as keeping warm in cold weather. As long as conditions are dry and they're well fed, adult chickens cope pretty well with temperatures down to and below freezing. Baby chicks, on the other hand, are hatched without any ability to internally control their core body temperature. That means they rely completely on the temperature of their environment to maintain their own body temperature. Of course, in nature, the mama hen creates a warm environment for her chicks under her wings. If your chicks don't have a mama hen, you need to provide a heat source for them. I have a couple of videos about how to set up brooder boxes for baby chicks. During their first days and weeks of life, the chicks begin to develop their thermoregulatory system and become increasingly able to use their own metabolism to maintain their internal body temperature within survivable limits. In addition, they become heavier relative to their surface area, start to add a layer of insulating fat, and develop their feathers and down. This means that if their environment is cooler than the ideal temperature for their age, they can create internal body heat by metabolizing carbohydrates. But chicks exposed to cold temperatures will try to get warm by reducing their surface area by huddling on the ground. This means they're not eating and drinking and so don't get the nourishment they need to create heat through their metabolism, while at the same time they actually need more feed to produce that metabolic heat. Plus, if the floor is cold, even more of their body is exposed to the cold, and so they chill even more quickly. Even if the chick doesn't die immediately, the long-term effects on its digestive and immune system leave it more vulnerable to diseases later. The effective environmental temperature required for optimal health depends on the age and size of the chick, the humidity, the air velocity, radiation, the insulating properties of the floor or bedding, and the presence of numbers of other chicks around it. This table is an approximation of the ambient temperature at which a chicken is comfortable and doesn't need to use its own energy to maintain its internal body temperature. This is known as the thermoneutral zone. After about six weeks of age, when the chick is fully feathered, as long as it is well fed and conditions are not damp or drafty, it can use its own metabolism to maintain its core body temperature. Until then, it's reliant on an external heat source. In my case, I wanted to move the chicks outside when they were only four weeks old. The day and nighttime temperatures were pretty mild, but not consistently above 20 degrees Celsius, so they needed an additional heat source. I decided to use a light bulb as a heat source. An incandescent light bulb is a very cheap and readily available source of heat, but there are a couple of things to be wary of. First of all, of course, it needs to be an incandescent light bulb. LEDs are much more efficient than incandescent bulbs, partly because they don't emit much heat. And in this case, it's the heat that we want. Because LEDs are so energy efficient, they've become very common to the point where it's quite difficult to actually obtain incandescent light bulbs sometimes. But incandescent bulbs are the ones we want. Secondly, of course, heat brings its own dangers. If you've ever touched an incandescent light bulb while it's on, you know it can be very hot to the touch. And we don't want our baby chicks scorching or burning themselves on a hot light bulb. Plus, chicken coops are full of combustible material. In fact, I used dry pine shavings as bedding in this little chicken house for my baby chicks. 
Chicks like to kick around in the shavings and it's easy to imagine a curl of wispy pine landing on a light bulb and bursting into flame. Unfortunately, fires in chicken houses are an all too common tragedy, so take fire safety very seriously. Thirdly, light bulbs run on electricity. So you're going to need to get electricity into your chicken coop somehow. If you already have your chicken coop wired for power, that's great. If not, then you're going to need an electrical extension cord that's rated for outdoor use, long enough to get from your power supply to the chicken house without joins that might be exposed to the weather, and not damaged, twisted or curled. You also need a residual current device or transformer which will protect you and the chickens from electrical shock if there's a fault. Finally, there's the fact that light bulbs are designed to give out light. But light 24 hours a day is not ideal for chickens of any age. They do much better with a natural daily rhythm of alternating daylight and darkness. So we want to use a light bulb as a source of heat, but we don't want the light bulb to come into direct contact with the chicks or with any combustible material in the chicken coop, and we don't want the light. A simple solution to both of these is to put the light in a bucket. It's pretty easy to construct, but it does require some minimal rewiring to the light bulb. In New Zealand, it's acceptable for homeowners to carry out some domestic electrical wiring in their own homes, including connecting and disconnecting fixed wire appliances, switches, light fittings and batten holders. But you should check the regulations in your area, and if you're at all uncertain, then get an experienced electrician to do this part for you. Let me show you how it goes. You need an incandescent light bulb. I used a 60 watt light bulb and that gave out a good amount of heat for the size of my chicken coop and the environment that it was in. You're going to fix the light bulb in the center of the bucket away from the bucket walls so that there's no danger of the heat from the light bulb melting the plastic of the bucket. I suggest that if you need more heat than you can get from one 60 watt bulb that you use multiple versions of a light in a bucket or some other heat source. If you try and use a higher wattage bulb in an ordinary plastic bucket then you might be inclined to melt the plastic of the bucket. Of course you're going to need a bucket. I used an ordinary cheap 9 litre plastic bucket that I got from the hardware store for about a dollar. I used a green bucket because that's what I had, but actually a black bucket like this one would have been much better, or even dark red like this one, because chickens can't see infrared light very well. If you want to know more about a chicken's eyesight, I have a video about that. We need a light fitting, preferably one like this one that's designed to attach to a wall or ceiling. And we need a power cable, preferably one with an attached plug. Be aware that light bulbs and fittings come in two types of attachments, bayonet or screw. It doesn't matter which you have, as long as both your light bulb and fitting are the same type. We also need a small piece of wood or similar kind of material that's going to serve as a secure backing for the light fitting as it fits into the bucket. We need a couple of screws and we need to drill a couple of holes. So let's do it. First we drill a hole in the bottom of the bucket. The size of the hole isn't critical as long as it's big enough for the wires. This little piece of wood is just going to be used as a backing behind the plastic to hold the light fitting in place nice and securely. And it needs to have a hole drilled in it just the right size for the diameter of the electrical wire that we're going to use. In my case, it's about 10 mils. 
we thread the electrical cable through the hole and then the cable goes through the hole in the bucket leaving the backing on the outside and it's now that our light fitting can get connected to the wires. There are three wires and three connection ports. Then we sandwich the light fitting and the backing wood around each side of the bottom of the bucket. And screw the light fitting into place through the plastic of the bucket bottom and into the backing. You might have to remove the outermost section of the fitting to access the screws. If so, then reassemble the fitting once it's screwed in place. Then add your light bulb. And there we have it, a light bulb and a bucket. That serves as a good source of heat for just a few chicks. I actually wrapped an old towel around the whole bucket to try and reduce the light a little bit further and to make it a bit more cuddly for the chicks. I'm not sure if they really appreciated that, but it seemed nice and cosy. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.